Right, the last section of diagrammatic representations occurs in the following slides. And we look at the last one called a Poirbay diagram. Okay, now you should have seen a diagram like this before. Let me take you back to slides 11 to 13. Uh, where we looked at redox stability and the relationship that redox stability and pH have. Okay, so that's essentially what a poor bay diagram is. It's a French word, poor bay. And it's a map of the conditions of potential and pH under which a certain species is stable in water. Okay, so... In this sense, you will see that the diagram on the right shows you the qualitative diagram where there is water involved. So the red lines that you see on the diagram at the bottom over here, this red line and the top red line should refresh your memory of something that you saw back in slides 11 to 13. Okay, so what we can do now is we can add any species that is soluble in water um, to the diagram to show stability of the species in water. Okay, what does it look like? What do these things mean? Okay, so the red lines indicate water, as I've already said. Now we're going to add the species of iron to the, um, the mix. So we have a horizontal line that is going to separate the species related by electron transfer only. So this line that you see that's indicated by this arrow, this orange arrow, that horizontal line there is electron transfer only. Mm -hmm. It's independent of pH. You should remember how your graphs work. That a horizontal line that is parallel to the x-axis indicates an independence of that variable. We then have a vertical line, okay, such as this one over here. So indicated by the orange arrow, and that is going to separate species related by proton transfer only. Okay, so again, you need to refresh your memories about how graphs work. A parallel line to a certain axis indicates independence of that variable. And then, of course, you know about slope lines. Okay, so here we have a slope line over here, and the slope line will separate the species by both electron and proton transfer. Now, we spoke about this in the previous section, slides 11 to 17. Okay, so let's have a look at a little bit more detail of this Poirbay diagram for iron. Um, it's a simplified Poirbay diagram because not everything's on it, okay? And what we need to understand is that in between the red lines, we have four different species of iron. We have Fe3+, Fe2+, um, iron-3 hydroxide, and iron-2 hydroxide. Okay, now the way it works is that we see that for, for the reaction on the left here that starts this side, Fe3 plus, plus an electron going to Fe2 plus is independent of pH. So we are talking about the transfer of Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus, okay? So this area under this curve, starting from here, let me see if I can try and draw it for you. This area here and here and here will represent where we will find the species iron 2. This area here will where we will find the species iron 3 and so on and so forth. Okay, so in this sense, the transfer of Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus is independent of pH. That is why we have this blue line over here. Okay, parallel to the x axis, independent of the variable. All right, let's go up to this reaction over here where we have the reaction of iron 3 and 3 moles of water to give us iron 3 hydroxide and 3 moles of protons. Okay, so what's happening here is that, let me try and just erase the species so that we can uh, have a look at, and I'll use a different color as well. Um, so now we're going from 
this section of the graph to this section of the graph here. Okay, and this is independent of the potential because there is a parallel line to the y-axis and that reaction is completely dependent on pH. Okay, so we have a parallel, the transfer from Fe3 plus to the species Fe3, OH3, sorry, uh, iron hydroxide, iron 3 hydroxide. That is completely um, dependent on pH. There is no dependency on the potential whatsoever. Okay, um, what about the uh, third type where we have the dependence on the e electrode potential and the pH at the same time? Okay, this is where you get the sloped graph. So there are many sloped graphs, okay, and so for example, possibly the transfer of Fe2 plus to this species over here is going to be dependent on potential and pH, okay? And that's more complicated, but it just gives us an indication of the fact that this diagram can uh, explain the stability of certain species in water, whether they're pH dependent or not. Okay, here is another example uh, for manganese, for example, and you can see actually it's quite a lot more complicated. Um, again, we have the water boundaries uh, for indication of how stable uh, manganese is in water. Um, and you can see that in almost every instance where we cross the blue boundary, you will see there are sloped lines everywhere. The only uh, time that we have a pH dependent um, reaction is where we cross the boundary from manganese 2 plus to manganese hydroxide. You can see that the line is a vertical line that is parallel to the y-axis that implies that it is pH dependent only and not dependent on the uh, electrode potential. Okay, guys, this completes the unit on oxidation and reduction. Uh, there are tips for you on this slide to study going through Chapter 5 from uh, Wheeler, or if you want to use the other book, practice as many exercises and problems from the textbooks as possible, and you can start to prepare yourself for the next section. Great.